Welcome to session one of LTech 676. Quiet. Hello everyone, my name is Dan Hoffman and I'll be your instructor this semester. My background is in instructional design and media and I've been involved in the field of education for many years. In fact, I've had the privilege of working with students at every level from pre-K all the way to graduate school. In addition to teaching, my background includes research focusing on the design and development of digital learning environments. My work in this area has spanned across various content areas, age groups, and formal and informal settings. Together, these experiences have given me some insight into the complex relationships between education and technology. So now that you know a bit about me, let's get into the details of LTech 676. So what is a course titled Social and Ethical Issues in Educational Technology all about? Well, at the highest level, it is a course about society, which we might define as a group of people who live in a defined geographic area and who interact and share a common culture. Of course, all societies, and our 21st century society is no exception, face various challenges and problems. These problems or issues are conditions or behaviors that have negative consequences for large numbers of people within the society. Examples of social issues include poverty, all kinds of inequities, criminality, or a lack of civic engagement. Fortunately, most societies don't just stand by and watch these problems fester. Instead, they create different initiatives and establish various institutions to try and mitigate the problems they are facing. The goal, overall, is to improve the society as a whole. Two major examples of these initiatives and institutions are education and technology. Education, of course, is an institution we use to teach our children basic academic knowledge, skills, and cultural norms. Technology, on the other hand, is the application of science or knowledge to address specific problems. Technology can range from something as simple as using a sharpened stone as a tool to building a digital network to make it easy to share information and resources around the globe. Both of these forces, education and technology, influence and, in turn, are influenced by society and its problems. Stepping back, we might think about this diagram as a sort of system. And, like any complex system, a change to one component can impact all of the other components in that system. Importantly, these impacts aren't always clear or predictable. They aren't all good or all bad. And as we all know, reality is much more nuanced. In LTech 676, it will be our job to reflect on this system and how specific educational technologies have affected and are affecting the social and ethical problems of our time. This brings us to a guiding question, which we'll reference throughout the course. I like to call this question Kernahan's question, after the Princeton computer science professor named Brian Kernahan. Kernahan is famous for the various books he's written, such as his 2008 book titled D is for Digital. The subtitle of that book is What a Well-Informed Person Should Know About Computers and Communications. In this book, Kernahan asks an important question for modern society. What should an educated person know about computers? He goes on to explain why this deceptively simple question is so important. He writes on page 5, Most people will not be directly involved in creating such systems, but everyone is strongly affected by them, and some people will be required to make important decisions about them. There are three important points in this quote that I think are worth noting. First is the acknowledgement that only a few people are involved in creating technology systems. Second, nearly everyone in society is affected both directly and indirectly by these technological systems. And third, some people are required to make important decisions about these technological tools. When I first read this, it occurred to me that educators are people who make important decisions about computers and communication systems. And people who design and develop educational technologies also make important decisions about them. So what do these people need to know about computers? 
So our guiding question this semester will be an adaptation of Kernahan's question. Instead of asking, what should an educated person know about computers, we can ask ourselves, what should an educator know about computers? Or, to take it one step further, we can ask, what should an educator know about educational technology? This will be our guiding question this semester. And, as we'll soon see, answering this question will depend on our ability to analyze and evaluate technologies from social and ethical perspectives. Okay, so that's a 30,000-foot view of LTEC 676 content. Now I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about the course structure. Obviously, this course is online and asynchronous. This means everything will happen online and there is no real-time class to attend. For these reasons, we'll rely heavily on our learning management system, Canvas. When you first log into Canvas, there's some important information and links that I want you to be familiar with. In the overview module, you'll see three things the course syllabus, the office hour sign-up sheet, and the link to my virtual office in Zoom. If you click on the course syllabus, that will take you to a Google Doc that you can view, and I encourage everyone to read through it carefully in the next week. The office hour sign-up sheet also takes you to a Google Doc, but this one you can edit. This is the space where you can sign up for office hours when and if you need them. As you can see, there are already time slots listed, and all you need to do is put your name down and let me know which course you want to talk about. This brings us to the third link for my virtual office. If you're not familiar with Zoom, you can learn more about it at this URL. And to get to my virtual office, just navigate to zoom.us slash my slash Dan Hoffman. Another important task for you to work on is updating your Canvas profile. Here's an example of a student from a previous class. You'll notice she has some important information in her profile. First, she has a picture, and she has her degree level, degree program, and cohort year listed. She's also included a little bit of additional information about her background, which helps all of us get to know her a bit better. So, please take a few minutes to update your profile in this manner. If you are new to Canvas, there are many YouTube videos explaining how to do things. I've linked to one here called Canvas, How to Edit Your Profile. Definitely check that out if you need help. I want to talk a little bit about the weekly structure of the course. Each week will begin on Tuesday on or before 12 noon, and it will end on Monday at 11.59 p.m. When the materials for a week are released, they will look something like this. Now this is just a sample, but let's go through this module section by section. The first section is the presentation section, and in most weeks you will have a dedicated presentation file which you are responsible for viewing. In the next section, you'll see the readings for the session. Now pay attention as there may be more than one reading, and sometimes the readings will be marked optional, which means they're not required but are recommended. And finally, there's the assignment section for each module. The assignment section will have a number of different tasks that you need to be working on. Pay attention because assignments in the same module will have different due dates, which you can see listed under each assignment's title. Note that there will be times when you have multiple due dates in a given week. Finally, I want to end by sharing a few tips for success in this online asynchronous context. First, please review the presentation files carefully. You are responsible for the information covered in these videos, so it's a good idea to watch them and take notes. Secondly, it's important that you read the assigned readings. Also, take notes on what you read. These notes will be helpful when you work on the critical reflection assignments, which require you to cite the readings. In your critical reflections, I'm looking for evidence that you are able to connect the ideas in the readings to the ideas in the assignments. Next, I want to encourage you to plan ahead. Many of the assignments will involve multiple steps across multiple sittings, so please don't save them to the last minute. Finally, it is important that you monitor your own understanding in this 600-level graduate course. There's a lot of reading and the topics are heady. Ask for help if, when, you don't understand a particular concept. I'm here to support you and you can sign up for office hours whenever you need or want them. It's my job to help you be successful. Okay, that's all for our course introduction. I welcome you all to LTech 676, and I look forward to seeing you in Canvas. Have a great week.